let me start off with a question. What do you want to do with your life? Now, we've all heard this question way too many times. And for us high schoolers, it's usually, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, genuinely, I hate this question. And that's because there's immense pressure at this age to know the answer to this dreadful question. It's like one decision you make in your teenage years would impact your life up until you retire. Realistically, this isn't how it plays out. But that was exactly how much pressure I felt. Now, some of you might have an answer to this terrifying question. And if that's the case, that's great. However, I also know that some of you answered this question with a, I don't know, and that was me. During the pandemic, I was tasked with choosing my diploma subjects, and I was frustrated. I didn't know which subject to choose because I didn't know which major I wanted to study, nor the career I wanted to have. Now, if you're a fellow high schooler, you would know exactly how this feels. And if you're not in high school yet, well, good luck. You would know exactly how this feels, which is why I suggest you to listen to this talk in hopes that one day it would help. Now, society has made it seem like not having your entire life figured out is a threat to your potential success. Like, oh, you don't know what you want to be when you grow up? Well, good luck in university. You're probably going to pick the wrong major and fail anyways. But the truth is, no one has their life completely figured out. And that's okay. It's okay to not have your life completely figured out up to the specifics of your future paychecks or how many kids you're going to have. Like, trust me, I'm only 16 and people have already started asking me that. But I do believe that one of the best ways we can prepare is through this journey of finding yourselves. Because I believe that preparation is key to success. By finding yourself, you're able to understand who you are and what you want. Now, does this mean that once you're in this journey, then you're done for life? Well, not really. The truth is, self-discovery is a lifelong journey because things are constantly changing. Our environment, our priorities, our values, they constantly change. However, starting the self-discovery journey now can help us better adapt to these changes while still remaining our authentic self. Hence, this is why my talk isn't only for fellow teenagers. It's also for people of all ages. It's for Gen Zs, Millennials, and even Boomers. I mean, I know that my parents got into a little bit of a self-discovery journey during the pandemic, and they're like 50. <laughs> they're pretty old. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> now, there were three steps that helped me find myself during the pandemic. And although I followed these three steps during quarantine, these steps are definitely applicable in any situation. Now, in order to revisit these steps, let us rewind back to where it all started, shall we? It is currently the beginning of the pandemic. I had just received news that I would be receiving two weeks off of school in the form of online classes. And see, I was ecstatic because, let's be honest, who was it? I was doing online classes every day in bed. Now, let's be honest, who did not shower before class? And who actually slept during class? Me. Now, because of these guilty privileges, I thought that I was living my best life. I was wrong. Quarantine ended up to be a never-ending horror story, and we're literally still stuck in it now. I mean, did you really think it was only going to last until two weeks? Mm -mm. It got extended to two months, to three months, to four months, and before you know it, it's literally been years. We're still stuck in it now. Now at this point, I felt like I was no longer living my best life, especially when I started to feel like I was losing myself. Now there were things that had to change because of COVID, and that made me feel like I lost parts of myself, metaphorically of course. I lost my passion because the school play that I had put my heart into got canceled and I was no longer taking musical lessons. I lost my outgoing personality because I could not see my friends and I was in isolation most of the times. Like so many other teenagers, I struggled to balance my declining mental health and school. Now some of you might quote a Kim Kardashian joke and tell me, Weena, there are people who are dying. Well, you're not wrong. Although I believe that everyone's experiences are valid, I also understand that so many people lost more than I did. So many people 
lost their jobs, their relatives, and some even completely lost access to school, all of which can really make you feel like you were losing yourself. And as much as I wanted to be who I was before the pandemic, I realized that I couldn't. I had to adapt. And in this period of losing myself, I realized that it was the best opportunity to create who I am. Now, there were three steps that helped me find myself during the pandemic. And the first one is to increase self-awareness, especially in how you feel. Now, during the pandemic, my mental state was equivalent to a stereotypical teenage room. It was messy, chaotic, and disorganized. And if, it, if you've ever been in one of these rooms, you would know that it's impossible to function. And that was exactly how I felt. If you feel the same way, you're not alone. According to a scientific brief released by the World Health Organization, global prevalence of anxiety and depression increased by a massive 25% during the first year of the pandemic. Now, this might be caused by altered daily routines, financial pressure, and social isolation. There were two ways that helped me increase self-awareness, and the first one is very simple, is to talk about your feelings. I find that talking about my feelings, especially to a trusted friend or my school counselor, really helped me bring clarity to my thoughts. In addition, I was also able to receive meaningful advice on my situation. Now, Wina, what if I'm not comfortable with talking about my feelings? In this case, I strongly suggest journaling. A study done by Michigan State University revealed that expressive writing can really help our brain cool down in times of anxiety. Hence, this is why I believe that journaling is one of the best ways we can express our feelings. And it's basically like a free self-therapy session. And one of my favorite things about journaling is that you can adjust it to fit your needs. For example, if you wish to create a more positive sense of self, you could create gratitude entries and positive affirmations. If you wish to keep track of your goals, you can create habit trackers and reflection entries. Self-awareness is important because it allows you to become more mindful with your needs and your wants. In addition, it helps you get to know yourself on the inside. Now, this really helped me prepare for the second step, which is understanding what you want. Now, this can be understanding your passions, your dreams, your goals. It could be anything. If I can describe this step with an analogy, it would be like a roller coaster ride because you will experience trials and errors and you will need to step out of your comfort zone. Now, Wina, how am I supposed to step out of my comfort zone if I can't physically get out? The best answer to this is to take advantage of technology. Nowadays, everything is online. We live in a world where we are more connected than ever with fewer and fewer barriers between us. And this allows us to access a wider range of opportunities in the comfort of our own home. I use this advantage by joining online international competitions, by joining NGOs through online recruitment, and starting online businesses. Now, in this period, I wasn't only steps closer to discovering who I was, I was also experiencing an immense period of self-growth. Raise your hands if you think stepping out of your comfort zone is scary. Yep, same, me too. I mean, this TED Talk right now, I'm shaking on the inside. However, I've also realized that these experiences helped me develop more self-confidence. And most importantly, it helped me gain new skills and new connections. Remember when I said that this step isn't without its trial and errors though? Here is where I encountered my problem. I wasn't passionate in the things I was doing, and I was very confused because I was doing a lot of things. I realized that the root cause of this problem was that I was doing things based on society's expectations, based on what they expected me to do. An activity that really helped me solve this issue was self-visualization outside of society's expectation. And now you can do this too with vision boards, mind maps, or the Gen Z's and millennials' favorites, Pinterest board. You see, I was known as a very academic student. And naturally, because of this, I thought in order to find myself, I needed to be doing more serious academic activities. Now, this isn't wrong, but I've learned along the way that it just wasn't for me. 
Through this activity, I was able to discover that I wanted to pursue creative endeavors in comparison to the serious academic rigor. I wanted to sing. I wanted to create fun social media content. But what I also realized was that I've never pursued these activities because I wasn't confident. I wasn't confident with my singing. I wasn't confident with creating social media content because there was a huge stigma about it. And this is where I believe the third step is most important, which is self-acceptance. I realized that most of the times we don't end up finding ourselves because we resist it. Especially during teenage years where we're so prone to peer pressure and the need to fit in. We do a lot of things just to please other people and get them to like us. I mean, think about all the times you've changed because you want to fit in. Think of all the times you held back an opinion because you fear that it won't be accepted. Think of all the times you've done things for the sole purpose of being involved in a group, for the sole purpose of others liking you. Chances are we've done a lot of things, but the problem with finally finding yourself is that not everyone is going to accept you. And I'm going through this problem now where a lot of my friends are creating rumors about me because they didn't like that I've changed. My best solution to this issue is to keep on being yourself and to find new friends. Honestly, if your newfound self doesn't disrespect or hurt other people, you shouldn't find this need to change yourself to fit in. And there are 7 billion people in this world. Chances are there are going to be, there are going to be people who are going to accept you. I'm very lucky because I have a close group of friends and my lovely family that accepts me no matter what. Now let's rewind back to the first question. What do you want to do with your life? I've realized through this journey that I wanted to pursue a major in communications in hopes that I would be getting a job in the creative industry or the entertainment industry. I'm very happy that I went through this journey because if I hadn't, then I would be taking law. Knowing myself now, I would have really hated that decision. It's too serious for me. <laughs> now, with that being said, it is now your turn to embark this journey to finding yourself to discover your place in the world, and to finally unleash your full potential. Now on the outside, we're all ordinary, but what makes us extraordinary is our uniqueness and individuality. I hope that if you do decide to embark on this journey, you're able to increase self-awareness, you're able to understand what you really want, and you're able to fully accept yourself. And as a last word, I want you to remember that Finding the extraordinary in life starts with finding yourself. Thank you.